Hey guys, I'm Richard Neowin. Today we're going hands on with iPad OS 13 and iOS 13. So, if you don't know iPad OS 13, it's because it's never been a thing before. It's basically rebranded iOS for iPads. So, we're looking at iPads first because um, it's really just, it's mostly a superset of what iOS 13 has to offer on iPhones. Um, so, as you can see right now, I do have mouse control. Mouse support is a thing. We don't have a traditional pointer. Um, it's an assistive touch feature. It's really accessibility. Um, I wanted to get that out of the way since you can see the pointer on the screen. But one other thing I want to get out of the way is that you should not install this. Um, it's a common thing. Apple announces it at WWDC. Everybody wants to get their hands on the developer beta, even though Apple says, don't install this. And then they install it anyway. Uh, Apple took some extra precautions this year, um, probably because it's, not in good shape, and it's not. Um, one precaution that they took is there's no configuration profile this year. Um, the last few years, you've been able to install a configuration pro profile, and then you just download the update OTA, and that's not happening anymore. You just get restore images. The other thing is that you need to be on the Mac OS 10.15 beta to install this. You can install it from Windows. You can install it from a production version of Mac OS. And that actually makes sense because if it's only for developers, then you would need to be on a Mac because iOS, you can only develop for iOS from a Mac. So there's also a big warning <laughs> on the iOS beta. So stay away from I mean, the, the public beta is coming in July. It's very rough right now. The first beta is always rough. People always jump to it and then they complain about it later. The second beta will be better. It'll come, be out in about two weeks. Uh, the third beta will be even better than that, and that'll probably be around when the public beta comes out. So I recommend waiting for the public beta, and it'll be a lot easier to install. So, yeah, so now we have Mac support, uh, uh, mouse support. You can see um, we can click on our stuff, and if we right-click, we get the assist, the assisted touch menu. We don't we don't have context menus. We can't right if we right click anywhere on icons. We don't get that um, 3D touch menu that that we might get where if we pressed. So that's mouse support. It's it's assistive touch. And if you um, go into accessibility, you can scroll with the scroll wheel. Just right clicking only brings up that one menu. We go into touch. Assistive touch, you just turn it on, then you go into Bluetooth and you pair your mouse. Um, I don't know if USB mice work. I know um, obviously the newer iPads have USB Type-C ports. Um, I've not hear, heard reports of them working. I've not heard reports of them not working, so I don't know. So another big feature, dark mode. Uh, this will show up in the out-of-box experience. You'll get to pick. You don't have to find it in settings. It's awesome. It's just so much better. We also have wallpapers that, that match it. If we go, for some reason, it doesn't use the wallpaper in the dark mode screen, but that's okay. Um, we have four different wallpapers, so we can um, set whichever one we want. And you can see that they're different in light mode and dark mode. So you saw the wallpaper before where it was white, and now the background of the wallpaper will be black and it matches the dark mode. Now we're just gonna go in and we're gonna turn this assistive touch off because I don't actually want it. Um, I've had some problems with it where it will actually um, unpair the mouse when the device goes to sleep and then it's very hard to get it paired again and that's a real pain. Okay, so we're, we're just gonna leave it. So new home screen, um, not very new because you can see if we try to move an icon, we try to put it down here, it just bounces back. It's not like you can put them anywhere you want, like a operating system would do. Uh, but but um, you could fit more icons on the screen, which is a big deal. Uh, that, Apple took a lot of criticism when it first released the 12.9 inch iPad, and the icons look so spaced apart. Um, another thing is that you can add your widgets. You can do a swipe to the side, and there's your widgets now. It's all or nothing on that. You can't um, choose which ones to bring in. All you can do is just customize the whole set. So now there's just no widgets over here. And um, yeah, so if I press the home button, this is my home screen now. I don't know how to get rid of these widgets. They just seem to disappear um, periodically. You know, if we swipe over here, swipe, uh, you know, it's it's very buggy right now. So, so we'll figure out exactly how that works kind of later on. But you have widgets on the home screen. You can fit more icons, even with the widgets there. And this is, 
obviously, it's just a much better home screen. So just to have some more information on there, this is not a small screen. And um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, you could have multiple instances of the same apps open now. So if I open notes, okay, now this is in dark mode, and we can open notes again, bring in the slide over. Now you should be able to do this in split view, and um, I have not been able to yet. I've, I've not been able to, but um, if you swipe up, you can actually go to a multitasking screen with different slide over apps. Now, the only problem with this is it's not showing you all your apps that you have open. It's just showing you various slide over apps. And I say this, for example, if I go into my multitasking screen here, you can see that I do have music open, um, iTunes, Safari, Calendar, um, stuff that, that would show that show up there. And I assume it's because it's an early beta. Usually, if you have an early iOS beta and you say, why does this work that, this way? It doesn't make any sense. It's going to get fixed in a later beta. So let's just hope that that happens. Um, there's new pen features for iPadOS. This is an interesting one. It's um, kind of weird because it reminds me of what Microsoft did with Microsoft Edge, where they said you can mark up the web. So um, you can mark up web pages now. Um, that was one of the mark web pages, documents, emails. And what it's really doing, if we go into Safari, and we all open up NeoWin, which is in dark theme, of course, because that's that's what we're going with here. If I swipe in with the pen from the right, takes a screenshot, and we can write on it. And, of course, we have this nice uh, editing menu here where we can choose colors of the pen and everything. It's just taking a screenshot and, and bring you to a dialogue that um, you can edit on, right? So now it's, it's the full page screenshot, which is actually better than what Microsoft did. And then if we save this, uh, so that's going to save a PDF. Might be useful at, at, at some point. You can save a whole page. You can save, save a PDF. And um, like I said, just taking a screenshot and, um, and it's saving the whole thing. It's not giving you like an actual interactive web page. So we'll play more with that later on, but that's just one feature that's um, new with the pen support in iPadOS. Okay, so files. Right? In, the, in the Files app, we have folder sharing. And if you're like me, you heard them announce this feature and you said, wait, they didn't support folder sharing? So yeah, you can share a folder. All right, And I, I was just kind of surprised that, that it was possible for Apple to have a um, cloud storage service that didn't support folder sharing. Uh, so now that's a thing. Uh, custom fonts can be installed. I haven't been able to get that to work. Uh, floating keyboard is a new thing. So if we, let's go back into Safari. And if we go up here and we, there's our keyboard. Now, if we pinch on the keyboard, we get a new floating keyboard. And we can bring this keyboard anywhere that we want on the screen. We can swipe. That's a new thing that Apple added to the, to the, to the iPhone keyboard and the smaller keyboard on iPad. So if we pinch, we get that. Uh, if we open it, we get the full-size keyboard, but swiping does not work. Um, swiping has been a thing on Android phones for probably close to a decade now. So the fact that, like, this is something that I have wanted to see in the iOS keyboard for a long time. Really glad to see that it's finally there. So, yeah, we have the swipe keyboard now floating keyboard on i on iPad which obviously there's just one keyboard on iPhone so that smaller keyboard it pretty much just is the iPhone keyboard so let's just put that back and um, we have new stuff in photos so if we open photos and we go to our photos tab you see that that it's arranged differently it's showing me photos if I go to all photos, like you can see that it's this is supposed to filter out screenshots, uh, basically just your crap. It's supposed to filter out your crap. And um, it's not perfect. You can see there's a screenshot in there, maybe some memes, whatever. You know, there's a, another screenshot. But if we go to all photos, look at how many screenshots are in here. Look at how much crap is, is just generally in my photo library. So this is, is organized by groups of days, which we've had in photos forever. And uh, now we have months and we have years that we can sort through. Um, going back to obviously 1901. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> by the way, that was taken with the, um, the 360 degree camera moto mod that just couldn't get dates 
correctly. So I digress. That's what's new in photos. Um, we also have, we go back to days. Oh God, we're, we're in 1901 now. Let's go back. To, let's go to 2019. Let's, let's pull up uh, my good friend, Rich Hay over here. We have new editing tools, right? We have lots of, lots of options over here. We can adjust exposure. Um, all type, I'm just making this photo darker, but we have a simple slider over here where we can, we can just make adjustments. Okay. So, so that's improvements with the real improvement. If we go into say albums and we're going to go down to our videos, all of these improvements have been added to video. So now you have all those editing tools in video the slider so we can adjust the, this kind of crash on me last time but now see it works now um, and I can just easily adjust the saturation vibrance all tint we just obviously we don't want to keep these shades and we can rotate videos too and this is according to Apple is the first time that that you've been able to rotate a video on uh, on iOS so that's pretty cool lots of new photo editing tools and um, useful stuff there's new maps, okay? So Apple is sending cars around to take pictures. We just open up maps. I don't really know where mine is because it's on the iPad. Um, so we can search. Um, if I pull this down, we have collections and we have favorites. So my places, I added the Empire State Building. With a simple tap, I'm now at the Empire State Building. I can pull up directions. Uh, that's supposed to be on my favorites. I tried to add it, didn't didn't work out quite the. Oh, there it is. It showed up. So now, I, if say the Empire State Building is a place I go every day, I just pull up maps. I type Empire State Building, and um, yeah, when I tried this before, I kept I kept adding it to favorites, and it just didn't show up. And what's cool is that I did it from an iPhone, and it just automatically shows up on my iPad, and it's just there. So that it's it's supposed to make it more simple. You just open it, tap it. You know that's why we have favorite places. Um, another thing that they showed off uh, was something that's similar to to Google Street View, where you can see three dimensional um, images of, of the places that you're you're going. And and I don't see that here yet, but um, we we have flyover, which flyover is very cool, but it, it's not new, where we can just kind of. We could do flyover tours, which, uh, I don't know. And that's been around since, I think, iOS 7 or something. And if you've never done the, the flyover tour, uh, check it out. Any city that says 3D on it, you could do a, a, a flyover tour. And it's, it's actually, it's so useless, but it's fun. Uh, but that's what's new in Maps. Um, we have a couple other things. Find My is a new app. Find My makes a lot of sense. So this is a combination of uh, Find, My Phone, Find My iPhone and Find My Friends. I always hated the name Find My iPhone because it's not just for your iPhone, it's for your iPad and your Apple Watch and your Mac. Um, so Find My Devices would have been nice, but also um, Find My Friends is included, so we can see that this is uh, where my wife is. You know, so that's all in one app now, and of course it supports dark theme, which is pretty consistent ac across the OS and all of Apple's apps. There are some, like the ones that come from the store aren't updated yet, so those will, those will get there. Um, there's new features for reminders. If we go into reminders, um, smart lists, it's um, pretty much just a redesign, and the, really the big deal, the reason they brought it up is because it's for Mac now also, and it's the same app, so it's using Marzipan, and um, yeah, that's, remind, that's reminders. I really don't use it, as you can see. I, I, I'm a Microsoft to-do guy. Um, in music, so I'm not, I can't show you the features yet because it's not working. But in music, if we go, say we go into this, help is playing. See how it says no lyrics av available? If we click this button on the bottom left. That's where lyrics would come up, but they're not available yet. And every song I tried says that at this time. And... What, what Apple Apple added lyrics a few years ago, and all it does is just gives you a, it's like a text document with lyrics on it. So now what it's going to do is highlight a line from the song as the song is being sung. 
It's what Amazon has been doing for a long time with its music services. It's pretty awesome. And I can't wait for it to come to Apple Music because I subscribe to both. And it's one of my favorite features about Amazon's uh, Amazon's music offerings. Moving over to iPhone, we can see that we have our same dark theme. And most of what we're, we're seeing is the same as on iPad, except as scaled to the iPhone, as, as usual. You know, as, as iOS tends to be, really this release isn't any different from an iOS release, except they're just calling it iPad OS and iOS. So, like, th things like... Apple Pencil stuff isn't isn't on iPhone. the the new the new home screen. There's the same amount of apps on the home screen. That's not changing. Uh, you can't add widgets to your home screen on iOS. I should say iPhones. You know, um, no mouse support stuff like that. But other than that, for example, um, the Find My app, right? Same app, scale to a phone. Uh, one one thing that's new is that you can you can add your uh, picture to your Apple ID. And what that does is is you could choose who you want to share that with and whatever. And your friends will automatically see your picture when they when they you know when you send them a message rather than the initials that we get right now. Um, weird thing, I sent messages to people on iOS 12 to see if it works. It does not work for them, but it seems to show up on an Android phone I sent a message to. Um, so that was a little strange. It showed up in my Gmail account for some reason. So this stuff is going to work better with time. So if we send a message here, we can see that we also have Memoji stickers. Right? So these are automatically made from the um, from the Memoji that you've made from, on your phone. That's your custom um, that's your, that's your custom and emoji that you create for yourself. And um, yeah, pretty cool. It's it's stickers that look like you. Cool enough, you know. And um, that's about it for iOS 13 and iPad OS 13. Um, I'm going to try to make videos for watchOS 6 and macOS 10.15. So um, hopefully I'll have that pretty soon. Um, again, don't install this. If you, if you do, you're doing it at your own risk. And uh, that's it. I'm Richard Neowin. Have a great night.